This is Joseph Trust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, is there any way I can get a posed mesh back to a T-pose? So to start off, I have ZBrush loaded up, and I have the Demo Soldier model here loaded in. And this question is asking about how I can take a mesh that may already be posed and bring it back to a T-pose. So the process for doing this, it can be done, but you needed to have a little bit of pre-thought before you posed your model. And the process involves using morph targeting inside a ZBrush. So if you have a model like the Demo Soldier here, and you have him in a T-pose originally, you can export that out. And then now I can pose him. And then if I import this T-pose back in on top of his self, if those vertices are the same, he'll morph back to the T-pose. So as an example of this, I'm just going to first export out the T-posed version of the Demo Soldier here. So I'm going to go to the Tool Palette and just click Export. And I'm just going to export him out as an OBJ. And I'm just going to save this as Demo Soldier T-Pose and then save him out. And now I'm going to pose the Demo Soldier. So if I go to the Geometry tab here, you can see he has no subdivisions right now. So I'm going to hold down Control and just apply some masking. So just mask out his arms here around the back and the front. Make sure you get all those fingers. Then I'm just going to hold control and click on the mask to apply some blurring to that masking. Then I'm gonna hold control again and click off of the model to invert the mask. Then I'm gonna select the rotate transpose line. I'm gonna come to this side profile here and draw a transpose line from his shoulder to his elbow. And after this is drawn, I'm gonna hold down Alt and click the inner circle on the end here and then just apply a bend like so. And I have bent his arms in some sort of pose there. And then I'm gonna come through and just do the same thing for his body, just adding a simple uh, bend here. So drawing a transpose line out, holding down the Alt button and clicking the end circle. So maybe I bend him like this. And then I'm gonna hold down Control and mask everything but his neck here. And then maybe do the similar process here. So just have him doing this. So some sort of simple pose. So let's say I've taken him and I've posed him and I want to sculpt on him. So I'm coming to the geometry tab here. I'm going to divide him up a little bit. And then I'm just going to come in with the clay buildup brush. And just start sculpting some details on him. So this would be the process you'd probably end up doing. So you have a model, you pose him, and now you start sculpting. Now at this point, let's say you want to get him back to a T-pose. So how can you do that? So as long as you still have the lower subdivision level, and this subdivision has the same vertex count as the mesh that we exported out earlier, we can now use that mesh we export out to apply it as a morph target. So I'm just gonna first export this pose out as well. So I just have both poses. So I'm gonna go to the Export tab here. Make sure I'm on that lower subdivision level. Click Export. And I'm gonna save this one out as Demo Soldier Quick Pose. So now I have this saved. And now let's say I want to get him back to a T-pose. So now I'm going to go over to Import, make sure I'm on the subdivision level that has the same vertex count and same vertex order. Come over here and click Import. I can now select that T-pose file that we saved out originally. And when you click Open, as long as those vertices match and the order matches, your model is going to morph back to the T-pose state. You can see it has morphed from the posed version. Now this is still going to keep your subdivision levels on the subtool. So if I scroll back up to subdivision four here, you can see it's still going to keep that sculptural detail that I had on the mesh, and he's now in T-pose. Now, depending on how much you change the surface topology or offset that topology with your sculpting is going to determine how well that sculpting holds up when you scroll back up to the highest subdivision level. So you can see this is held up pretty well. And I can come through and sculpt on this some more, and let's say I wanna go back to that pose now, go back to the subdivision level that matches those ones that I exported out. Go to import again. I can do that quick pose. Now I get that file back. Now I can go back up to that high subdivision level and I'm gonna get this result again. So you can use this morph target process with multiple poses. So I can even take one that I generated earlier. So going back down to that subdivision one, going to import, and I can select this walking pose. Now I have a version of them walking. I can go back up to my higher subdivision level there, and now continue sculpting on this mesh like so. So that is the process and how you can take a model that you had originally in a T-pose, pose him, and then bring him back to that T-pose. But there are restrictions, as mentioned, so you need to make sure that you have your original subdivided model and you've not changed the topology, so you can't be cutting arms off, cutting heads off, or even using Dynamesh at that stage, because that will change that model topology 
and then this morph target import is not going to work. And you also want to make sure you have the same vertex order. So if I come over here and say had this at subdivision 2 and now try to do an import on that T pose mesh, you're going to get this dialog that's going to pop up. And this is telling you that the topology of the mesh has changed. Since the vertex count and order is no longer matching, it's now going to think that you just want to project the details from this version of the model onto the other mesh. So if you do this, then it's going to give you this strange result, and it's probably not going to be what you're looking for. You can see I've got them back to this posed version, but none of those sculptural details are still there. So you just want to make sure that your mesh is at the subdivision level that matches the files you exported, and then just go to import. And now when you import, it's going to apply that morph, and now you can scroll up and down and get your sculpting back to where it was. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.